Maybe you're wondering how to go about finding the classes that you'll model in your class diagrams. That's what this movie is about, finding, defining classes. A good way to get started is to review existing specifications, including use cases if you have them, and talk to business experts to find the entity classes. By an entity class, we mean a class that defines the objects that are tracked by the business. So when we're talking about entity classes, usually we're talking about data. Now, as you review those specifications and as you talk to experts on the business side, you want to listen in particular for the nouns that they use. The nouns will help you later on start to define your classes. And as you're listening for those nouns, there are a few different kinds in particular that you want to watch for. These include tangible things, things that you can see or touch, things like an order, an invoice, time card, paycheck, or inventory. You also want to watch for roles. If you've done use cases, you'll have identified a number of roles in identifying the actors in your use cases. And roles can include customer, manager, customer service representative, shipper, data entry clerk, and so on. Watch for incidents, things that happen, such as place order, cancel order, receive payment, ship order. Again, if you've done use cases, a lot of the incidents will be the same as your use cases. Keep an eye out for interactions of various kinds. Sales receives order from customer or in a hospital system, doctor treats patient. Also, watch for specifications. When you're thinking about specifications, think standards or government standards, things like dimension and capacity. Specifications will help you later on identify attributes and also constraints. So, as I said, watch for nouns. The reason for that is that nouns will help you identify classes, attributes, and objects. You also want to listen for verbs, things that the nouns do, or things that are done to the nouns or done with the nouns. The verbs indicate operations, methods, and relationships, so they also offer you useful information. Now, as you go over the list of nouns you've collected, you'll probably notice that some people will use more than one noun to talk about the same thing. For example, people might say worker and employee interchangeably. Other nouns may not have any bearing on the classes that you want to identify or the system you're designing. So you want to look through your list of nouns and start sorting it into what information is useful, what you want to keep. And here's a checklist that will help you do that. Keep classes that represent physical objects, those tangible things we were talking about earlier. You want to keep classes that represent conceptual entities. You also want to keep classes that represent categories of classes. These can become superclasses that will be useful for things like generalization. And finally, Keep classes that represent known interfaces to the world outside of the system. Here's a quick example. In talking to personnel about a hotel and how it works, you can start to identify the different classes that make up the hotel system. One of your basic classes is the room, and that has attributes such as floor, the type of bed, king, queen, or double, smoking or non-smoking, maximum number of guests allowed, and operations such as reserve, check out, clean, maintain, and so on. In the conversation, another class was identified, a child class that inherits from the room class, and that's the suite class. The suite class has all of the attributes and operations of the room class, but it adds a couple of attributes number of rooms, since suites have more than one room, and some of the suites have jacuzzis. Also, there are a number of roles that come into play in the hotel system. We have the guest, and the guest has attributes like name, home address, credit card, whether or not the guest is a gold club member, uh, which shows us we need a gold club class, and operations such as get reservation. We also have a number of classes of hotel employees such as clerk, maintenance staff, and housekeeping staff. Over here we have a reservation class that has attributes such as confirmation number, and operations such as submit, 
confirm, and cancel. Our cancellation class has a cancellation number attribute, and so on. Now, as you talk to business experts, you'll probably also hear business rules, policies, things like that, that will help you identify constraints. And we've listed one here. Cancellations must be before 3 p.m. on the date of arrival, or else the guest is charged for one night. So you can collect things like constraints and make notes as you start to identify your classes. Now this is just a first stab. You can probably, in looking at this, you can probably think of other classes off the top of your head. Also, as you move ahead in the development life cycle, you'll be identifying classes that they don't even know about on the business side that will be necessary to the system. But reviewing specifications and talking to business experts is a good first step in helping you to identify the classes that you need.